The only people who don't want to disclose the truth are people with something to hide. With word that at least four GOP senators may need to look over their shoulders come primary season, the head of one Tea Party group today upped the stakes in the GOP civil war, hinting that either the GOP establishment is on the way out or an actual third party may be born out of this schism. Everything's more democratized and, and Republicans should come to terms with that. They still want to control things from the top down and if they do that, there will absolutely be a split, but my prediction would be that, that we take over the Republican Party and they go the way of the Whigs. And joining us now is Larry Clayman of Freedom Watch and Martin. James Peterson, an associate professor at Lehigh University and an MSNBC contributor. Welcome to you both. Uh, Mr. Clayman, uh, you of course are affiliated with a different Tea Party group, we know that, uh, but in your book, Whores, Why and How I Came to Fight the Establishment, you write this. I have never engaged the services of a prostitute, but I have encountered a lot of whores in my career. People and interests who sell out their nation for money, power and fame. So who is the whore in your opinion? Is it Ted Cruz or Mitch McConnell? Well, that was with regard to people in Washington generally. You know, it was Thomas Jefferson who said, Martin. I understand that, Mr. Clayman. I just wondered if I could take your very words, though, and ask you which of those two, Mr. Cruz or Mr. McConnell, is, in your opinion, a whore? In terms of how I would characterize it, Mitch McConnell has sold out the American people, so I would characterize him in that group, because he does not represent the interests of the conservative movement, the libertarian movement, or for that many, any, any other movement. And whether it's McConnell, or whether it's President Obama, or whoever, they're representing their own proper interests in Washington. And it's not the interests of the people. And that's why I said I was referring to Thomas Jefferson, is yes. that when the people fear the government, there is tyranny. Okay. When the government fears the people, there is liberty. Right now, our grievances are not being heard by either political party. And frankly, they're all whores. Okay. Well, so you, you've confirmed to us that your view is that Mr. McConnell is a whore. Professor Peterson, do you think the Republican Party may yet be in danger of a major secession with severe conservatives like Ted Cruz leading a rump of true believers. And what will that cost the nation, given that Ted Cruz almost single-handedly led the nation into default? Well, I, my estimation is, is that we're not going to see Ted Cruz leave the Republican Party anytime soon. He, he wants to run for president, and I think some of the things that he's been doing recently are, are clear indicators of that. I, to be honest with you, Martin, I'd love to see three or four political parties in our system, because I think one area where Mr. Clayman and I might agree is that in D.C. there's too much money in our political system, and so they're not very representative of, of, of the American people. But, but to me, Ted Cruz is part of that system. He, he he may, he may seem to be more uh, rebellious or revolutionary because he's affiliated himself with, with the Tea Party, but, but at the end of the day, Mr. Cruz is uh, pretty, uh, pretty on the straight and narrow when it comes to American politics and big money, polit big money being in American politics. Yeah. Well, let's give him credit, though, for taking a position, because there are very few people in Washington who stick their yes. neck out. Okay. And Cruz, Cruz did take yes. a position that he believes in, he carried through with it, he yes. didn't win, but he's not at the level of McConnell. I don't believe he's a whore. Let's see how he evolves over time. I don't think yeah. we can judge him yet. Uh, okay, well, Mr. I wouldn't use that kind of terminology. Mr. Clayman, um, speaking of, uh, of people who stand by their word, uh, last year you attempted to challenge the current president's name on the ballot, claiming that he was not a natural-born citizen. And here's a sample of what you said last weekend. Actually, I'm still doing that, Martin. Good, good okay. And here's a sample of what you said last weekend at a rally attended by Mike Lee, Ted Cruz, and Sarah Palin. Take a listen, sir. A president, an imperialistic president, who bows down to Allah. This president is not a president of we the people. He's, he's the president of his people. And to demand that this president leave town to get out, to put the Quran, to put the Quran down, to get up off his knees, and to figuratively come up with his hands out. Up. Mr. Clayman, are you saying mm. that the President of the United States is in fact a foreign-born Muslim who has hoodwinked the entire nation? First of all, that clip, Martin, was clipped, okay? I didn't even get to finish the sentence. It was p pasted together. But secondly, what I'm saying is, is that the President has bowed down to Arab states 
and other Muslim interests at the expense of the United States and Israel, and frankly, our servicemen and women who can't defend themselves in Afghanistan and other war theaters because Mr. they Clayman, have to, Mr. because Clayman, our rules of Mr. engagement Clayman, don't allow Mr. them to Mr. fire Clayman, unless they're fired upon first. I understand, first. Mr. Clayman, okay. Mr. Clayman, I really want to focus on what you said, if I may. I'd be happy what, to. What evidence do you have to support these repugnant sleer, smears and slurs? Have you asked the president if he's a Muslim? Have you, have you observed him performing the various practices of Islam? Has he arranged for the White House to be adjusted so that it faces Mecca? Have you seen him take the Hajj? What is your evidence as for making those kinds of As a journalist statements? and as a writer, Martin, you know that those references were metaphoric. What I'm talking about... They were metaphoric. Is president, let me finish. <laughs> they were but metaphoric. They ring, but they ring true because they were this metaphoric. president okay. has, so, everything, has done everything he can so, sorry, to so, harm so, Israel... So to when, harm American sorry, interests so Mr. in the Middle Clayman, East. Mr. Clayman, that's a when, fact. When you said Indisputable. So what you said last weekend, if, if I understand you correctly, you were using metaphor what? Just to simply incite the crowd to titillate Sarah Palin? Just like was you Was it do. just all a rabble rap? Well, hang on, I've, never, like said, I've never lied about okay? the president. No, we're making uh, a point. You're making a point with an audience. You were, You're trying sir, to get them to understand. Sir, what I'm and asking let me you finish, is, Martin, what, was it all an act? Was it, Mr. Clayman, Mr. Clayman, Mr. Clayman, allow me to ask you the question. Allow me to ask you the question. Was allow me to answer the question. Was it the act of a rabble riser, rouser, who tells lies in public just to incite the crowd. And I have to ask mm. you, who's the whore now? You consider them to be lies, Martin. I consider them to be truth. I suggest people read the column that's coming out tonight on worldnetdaily.com, which explains exactly <laughs> what I said. And namely, this president, when he gave an interview in 2008 to George Stephanopoulos, he referred to his Muslim faith. Number two, and we don't condemn him for that, but number two, he has done everything he can to harm Israel and American interests in the Middle East, our servicemen cannot even defend themselves properly. They're dying in record numbers in Afghanistan because they can't fire upon any enemy, jihadist enemy, for fear they're going to hurt some kind of collateral Muslim civilian population. Um, what, Professor, we are not there is, to hurt Professor anybody, Peterson, but we're here to Professor defend Professor Peterson, ourselves. please, please, uh, yeah. your response. Uh, just a, just, just a, a, a few things here. Um, you are demonizing Islam just in the framework of the metaphor that you set up in your comments. And I just want to make it clear here that in the United States, we have freedom of religion. You can practice Islam and still be the president of the United States. You may not like that or your group might not like that, but that's the country uh, that we live in. And I wonder, you know, Mr. Clayman, who exactly you're talking about when you're talking about the president only serves his people. I mean, are you talking about people here in the United States? Um, are you talking about uh, people abroad? Uh, the idea that this president has somehow been the greatest supporter of Islam or of, of Islamic regimes in the Middle East is, is a little bit convoluted. I don't even know where to begin well, with that. I mean, it's, it's interesting. It's like being a little bit if you let me, if, 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 it's if, not if, you let, if you let me finish, it's, it's, it's convoluted in the sense that you know the foreign policy that President. Uh, Obama has executed over the course of the last five or six years is almost identical to the foreign policy that Mr. Bush and Cheney implemented in the United States when, when they well, were I'm running not this a great country. I'm a fan of and, Bush and, and Cheney. What, I, let me, let let me, me say this. So, I am a fan of Bush and Cheney. Mr. Bush Clayman, and Cheney, Mr. Clayman, Clayman, Mr. Clayman, Mr. Clayman, Mr. Clayman, Mr. Clayman, Mr. Clayman, you must Bush Bush allow Professor Peterson to have his say. When Bush and Cheney were prosecuting the war on terror, I did not hear your group referring to them as Muslim. I did not hear your group trying to delegitimize their presidency. And so, and so that begs the question as to why President Obama, whose foreign policy, again, is c quite comparable, if not in some ways identical to the Bush-Cheney foreign policy, why that draws the ire I, and I also othering of this president in this, in this kind of way in terms of the words than, you used about the rally. Rather than listening to cropped quotes, which MSNBC sometimes has done, I think hopefully it'll be corrected in the future. I suggest that Wait, you meet, did you read my writings. That he, did I you say that he was a Muslim? <coughs> Wait, Mr. did you say that this president Mr. was a Muslim? Clayman, I said, you said, said, you said down, kneel said down it. to the Quran. Did you? That was a metaphor that he favors <laughs> Arabic interests and Muslim interests over American okay. and Israeli interests. Okay. And he is the, not, the, frankly, the, he's not the, a president in the mold of a Jefferson or an Adams okay, who Mr. believes Mr. in Judeo Mr. Well, Clayman, Judeo Judeo Christian well, values or founding fathers. It depends on what mold you want your president to be in. Mr. Jefferson was a racist. Yeah. And so, so I don't know what mold you exactly you well, want your president well, to be in. But, but, but again, well, even as a metaphor, even as a metaphor. I'll tell you he's a racist. Someone who attacked... Uh, in the Trayvon Martin case, George Zimmerman, before he had a chance 
to be heard by a jury. Uh, and then Mr. when he's acquitted, Mr. Clayman, and then when he's acquitted, uh, I'm just like wait, Trayvon wait, Martin was 37 years ago. Mr. Clayman, Mr. Clayman, Mr. Clayman, Mr. 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 Clayman, you, Mr. Clayman, can we just can we just pause for a second here? You've you have suggested that what you said about the president was purely metaphoric, okay? And that's been your line of argument. Uh, we have not in any way misrepresented your statements. You heard I'm us. not backing off you, what you, I said, Martin. Good, I'm not backing okay. off. So here's the question. Well, I'm saying it's metaphorical is backing off of it. I suggest, suggest you read is my column tonight okay. so, on worldnetdaily.com and you'll Mr. see. Mr. Clayman, I will read it as I have read your book and I will take great care reading. of Thank it. Thank you. But, fact, here's, but here's a I'll question I have. I'll copy. Mr. Clayman, here's a question I have for you. How would you defend yourself if accused of being a delusional racist whose hatred for this president is in fact a form of psychiatric pathology, an illness? I mean, how do you defend yourself <laughs> from the accusation that some people... Well, hang on a second, sir. You have just alleged that what you said last weekend about the president of the United States was metaphorical. And what I am trying to offer to you, sir, is a similar experience. And we have people who may regard you in exactly that way, metaphorically, as you put it. How do you defend yourself against the accusation that you're a repugnant racist whose hatred for the president of the United States, the current president, President, dominates every single aspect of your life. Martin, Martin I, I defend it because you said it, okay? Because you are prone to exaggeration. You have a <laughs> reputation of going over the top yeah. and, frankly, just trying to destroy conservatives who are yeah. trying to represent thank everybody. You, Mr. Clayton, and, and thank what you was very wrong much with for that? joining us. And Professor James Peterson, thank you, too. We're right. going to be... Uh... The only people who don't want to disclose the truth are people with something to hide.